Hello everyone and welcome to, featuring Annie, uh, another session of chemistry in which today we're going to look at the greenhouse gases. So in the webinar, uh, we actually spent a majority of the session basically me trying to figure out what you lot already knew about global warming and the greenhouse gases. This video today is not a full version of the webinar. What it is, is a shortened version of the key things that we started to cover at the end. If you do still want to have a go at the questions that were on the Kahoot that we did at the start of the webinar, I've made that available on Edmodo. Whoop. It is completely optional for you to do that if you did attend the webinar. If you did not attend the webinar, uh, you need to have a go at those, please, just so I can double check what everyone already knows. Do it now. So, the greenhouse gases. There are three more common greenhouse gases that we talk about at GCSE, however, there are more. In the webinar, we saw that the ones that were identified were carbon dioxide, water, nitrous oxides, nitrogen oxides, and methane. Now, nitrogen oxides aren't really talked about that much on the GCSE chemistry. However, they may come up in other areas of study. So, where do the greenhouse gases actually come from? Well, carbon dioxide, I like to think we know pretty, pretty easily, pretty quickly, as we've already done a lesson on the carbon cycle. Carbon dioxide primarily comes from the combustion of fossil fuels. In addition to that, it can be given off in a few different processes, including respiration and in decay processes as well. But the big one there is combustion of fossil fuels. All synthetic, so man-made emissions of carbon dioxide are the problem that we really do have. Methane is CH4. That's one carbon with four hydrogens around the outside. You can see on the diagram on screen that there's a black blob in the middle and four circles around the outside. The four white circles are hydrogen, the black bob is carbon. So methane primarily comes from, um, as we talked about in the webinar, cow emissions. Um, yeah, cow farts. Uh, it's not necessarily just cows farting that produces methane, it's the farming aspect of it. So a better way of putting cow farts would be to say, agricultural emissions so emissions from farms in particular cattle farms in addition to that though uh, there are lots of places in asia in particular that they have what we call uh, rice paddies or rice fields and they can also produce a heck of a lot of methane so it's farming essentially where methane is released in terms of uh the the artificial side of it the sort of human impact there and one thing that is a little bit, a um, little bit worrying actually, is methane can be found trapped underground. Um, which, if we're going to use it as a fuel, that's a really good thing because then you can dig it out of the ground, extract it, use it as a fossil fuel. So if we deliberately extract the methane, it's not really that bad. However, if methane gets loose naturally, that's not good. Um, what is even worse if if so the idea of permafrost, if the permafrost starts melting through global warming, then the methane deposits that are stored in the permafrost are released. And that is a massively bad, bad thing and a really big problem. The third greenhouse gas that you need to be aware of is water. Um, water we don't think of as being particularly harmful. Uh, and actually in terms of greenhouse gas activity, it's on the lesser end of the uh, concern scale. So water vapour mainly comes from just the generic water cycle that you should know from geography and potentially biology as well. Um, if we're going to look at sort of uh, human activity causing it, then combustion of fossil fuels does produce a little bit of water as well, but nowhere near as much as the carbon dioxide that it makes. 
So the higher level sort of stuff to this, um, now as far as I'm aware, I've never actually seen this come up at GCSE, but some people were asking why are they actually greenhouse gases? What's, what makes them a greenhouse gas? Uh, and it's not because they're green, it's not because they're from green sources like plants or things like that. It's all to do with the bonds that are available and the shape that the molecule actually takes. So you can see here at the very top of the screen, we've got methane here, CH4, carbon dioxide here, which is CO2, and this molecule here is H2O, therefore water. Now in each of these, you can see there's different balls at the end of the different sticks. So this is actually called the ball and stick representation. But because there's lots of things around one central point, what we have is when that molecule is hit with some energy, it can vibrate. It can vibrate in a number of different ways. And sort of the bigger the molecule is, the more complex it is, uh, out of these ones anyway, the more it vibrates. Uh, so, randomly at home, I did happen to actually have some molecules of water pre-made. <laughs> uh, I had a costume once where I went as a puddle and I just wore a blue thing and put loads of water molecules on myself. Science is life. Uh, so, this water molecule here, if this is hit by a load of energy, what will happen is loads of different vibrations are hitting. So, this section might vibrate over here a little bit backwards and forwards this section over here might vibrate a little bit backwards and forwards and because there's different sections of that molecule that can move in slightly different ways those vibrations are energy being absorbed by that molecule so with the example of this is water but the structure of carbon dioxide is also very similar in which there's two end groups around a central part so a molecule without extra bits attached, if it was just something like that, here, there's only very simple vibrations that can take place. So it's not going to absorb energy particularly well. Whereas if I add a little group there, there's all sorts of little vibrations that this thing can do. Therefore, it's going to absorb energy quite well. If then, for example, I add two extra groups, Here's one I made earlier, not. So now this one, I've got four groups present instead of just the two that we had before. So this is going to have even more different vibrations that it can do. This one can vibrate back and forth, this one can vibrate, that one can vibrate, and they can all do all sorts of different movements. So this molecule, which at the minute, uh, red representation usually represents oxygen. Uh, this should be black if I was to represent carbon. So there we go, there's a little dot of black there, so it is actually carbon. The white ones, once again, are representing hydrogen. For this molecule here, methane, there are four sections which vibrations can happen. So it's got double the amount of groups attached than a carbon dioxide has. For that reason, methane is actually a more dangerous greenhouse gas. It has four lots of potential to absorb the infrared radiation and cause the vibrations. Okay, whereas water whereas water has half the capacity to absorb that radiation. So therefore, in theory, methane is actually much more harmful as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. However, it is the carbon dioxide that we focus on more, and it is the carbon dioxide that is having a worse effect for a few reasons, but one of them is there's more of it. So here you can see on this slide that it states that carbon dioxide is considered to be the most significant greenhouse gas. It hasn't got the potential to be the most damaging because that lies with methane. However, due to the abundance of it, how much of it there is, that's where the real problem comes from. Not only that, it takes a heck of a long time for it to be broken down naturally. So the carbon dioxide that we form today can actually be around for a good 200 years. And that's why people keep getting worked up about we need to cut our emissions now because we might not get a chance in the future. As it says there, carbon is present in all living things, whether it be as carbohydrates, proteins, hog, 
our good old uh, elements needed for life there. We do, we have already seen the idea that carbon is cycled in the carbon cycle, okay, but carbon is very important. And the one thing that should be very, very worrying is the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have increased quite significantly from the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. Now, small fluctuations in carbon dioxide are completely normal and completely natural. But this trend here, um, all the data that we've got from history, whether it be from the ice cores or coral reef or tree rings, all the evidence that we have shows that carbon dioxide levels were relatively low for a long period of time. But since many of the Western cultures in particular started having their industrial revolutions, emissions have increased significantly. If you are a little bit of a history buff or you're interested in finding out more, what you can actually do is on this graph, you can actually plot significant events in history and see how it affects the carbon dioxide emissions. Now, we will be looking at that properly in a bit more detail another time. But if you fancy a bit of an extra challenge there, have a look at this graph and match the steepest bits to the dates and see what you can find was happening in those years. Once again, if you are interested in finding out more, you can see at the bottom there, I've referenced this. Uh, that is where I got my information from. I will put that link in the video description as well. OK, so that is as far as we got in the webinar. I was hoping to get on to um, global warming and the greenhouse effect itself. Um, but we ran out of time because we were establishing prior knowledge and that is fine. Our next lesson is going to be therefore on the greenhouse effect and there are some very important key bits of language that you need to know and you need to be able to use in an exam situation. So from me and today's co-host Annie, that is all for now. Stay safe, stay alert, stay well. Ah, don't take a cattail to the eye. <laughs> I will see you next time. Bye-bye.